I'm very happy and proud to be here on AWE. AWE. Um, it's, it's my first time um, having a speech, even though it's not for my first time being on AWE. Um, I like to talk about, um, as Mark said, how to make AR a reality for automotive fast and agile. The question is, why do I like to talk about that topic? And I think we're, we're living in very exciting and, and good times for AR and VR. Um, we have so much new technology, um, uh, applications, companies and partners just check out their halls. Um, I think that's, that's really good to see. W there are so many options, um, use cases, application, but somehow the, the potential is exploding now. We're on this point where, where we can do so much things. We're waiting for that so long. And the question is, how can we proceed within that? How can you find your specific individual way within that complex scenario? I would like to go to some um, questions, trying to give you an idea how we within BMW are answering those questions. So let me quick, quickly introduce myself, but no worries, I don't go to that CV. Um, I would prefer to, to let you know where my personal journey of AR and VR started. That's around seven years ago. On this one side, it's, it's not that long. On the other side, for AR, VR, it's some time. And it started at BMW Research and Technology. Um, and I remember quite well, um, I went down with a colleague into the garage to a car, quite obvious. I mean, BMW were doing, producing cars. And um, he put me in the driver's seat. He gave me like a hat-mounted device. It was more this Franken helmet thing, self-made. Um, wasn't that what, what you can see in those days? It's seven years ago. Don't forget that. But it had everything what we needed. It was like two pairs of um, displays, color, we could do 3D, we had tracking, we had computational power. So it was the basics were there. And then he turned on the demo, and it was, I have not any experience with AR before. And then he turned on the demo, he showed me different use cases. And that has been my one moment, this one moment in an AR VR life where you realize, hopefully realize, what AR really is about, and what the potential behind that is, and that it will be a game changer. And since then, you can see that um, I stick quite quite <laughs> fine to AR um, for different steps, and um, I decided myself I want to be part of that journey, and I want to really shape that future of AR to make it a reality. So talking about AR and VR, the question is, what does it mean for the BMW group? And here I would like to introduce four process steps within BMW Group. They're quite generic. Um, let's start on the top left, idea to offer. That's development, development of our products. And don't forget, product is the car for an end customer driving that. Of course, we're doing a lot of mobility, but at the end, it's mainly the car. And for that, that car, um, there's one example I, I've been personally working in, it's Mini Augmented Vision. That's just one example where we took a revolutionary display um, uh, we thought about how can that be used for um, compelling experience for the driver, for um, convenience and safety. It was a vision, it was not a product. You would know that probably. Um, but nevertheless, that's development. Until we have a product that we can offer to the customer. That's the second step, offer to order on the top right. And here we, we have a product, let's say a new type of car. And we're offering that to the customer. And here, already today, you can check your um, iPhone, you're configuring your car individually, select a color, um, specific engine, special equipment, tires, all those things. And you can check your with the smartphone already today, okay, that's how, how the car looked like. So before ordering, you already start this emotional experience in, in a spatial way. It's not just, just branded, um, you can do that at home in, in 3D, but specifically yours. At the dealership, you see it more general. And then we hopefully ordered that car. Um, it needs to be produced and delivered to you. That's what we call order to delivery. It's mainly, of course, production, but don't forget the logistics behind that. And production for BMW means we have our fabs, and we do not want to stop them producing cars because that's how we get our money, honestly. Um, so we don't stop them mainly, but there might be new people, new employees that need to be trained. There might be new processes, um, uh, how we how we want to um, produce cars. We might upgrade the current um, uh, type of car to the newest model. Um, and with AR, especially with AR, we can do that while the cars are being produced. So that's very powerful and helpful to use AR there, and we do so. And the fourth step, when the car is then delivered to the customer, so you're driving it, hopefully everything is fine, there might be some maintenance, hopefully not repair, but it could be as simple as, hey, how do I refill the water for, for the windshield? 
And also here, AR and VR could help you, especially AR. Um, so to, to, to sum summarize it, we're using AR and VR everywhere within BMW. I just want to show that that's like where we're working. Nevertheless, my home base is the top left idea to offer development of our future products, which is mainly the car. So leaving a little bit the, the BMW topics, I would ask a question, what does AR really mean for your company? Maybe you think about it a little bit. And for that, I would like to introduce a concept you probably know quite well. Um, AR and VR, both are mainly, there is some physical motion. And the question is, how do you stick that motion to the proper emission of a photon to your eye? Everything else doesn't count for a customer. You're using the device, you want to have the correct response of a photon. I think these three process steps are, are quite well known. You have a motion detection, could be in your living room or office environment, you see tracking on a head-mounted device, just as an example. You have processing and rendering that includes a 3D scene, um, it includes the use cases, where to do things. Um, and it, of course, also includes the display technology, how to emit a photo. It could be a head-mounted device, it could be a head-up display, VR, it depends what you're doing. That's very generic. The question is actually, what does it mean for your company? And here I would like to give an example for automotive. And that's, that's our specific interpretation. If you think about motion detection for automotive, and here I'm really talking about a driver sitting in a car while you're driving that car. That's what I'm talking about. Here you have a driver in a car, and that driver is moving, especially the head is moving, and it's actually quite a lot. The car is moving in a world, and that's the main purpose of the car, <laughs> to be honest. But also the world is quite static, especially if you compare it um, to your office or living room environment. You have pedestrians, cars, it but it could also be like um, some construction areas. So things are changing very dynamically. So for us, if you think to what does AR for us mean, we identified motion detection is much more than just one motion. Those three different motions, they build on top of each other. I call it it's a superposition of those three poses. The second step, process and rendering. It's also a question, what does it mean for, for automotive? And here, I would say, on the one side, we have embedded hardware. But in automotive, our product life cycle is like, it could be 10 years. It's not like a consumer electronic device, a few years, and then you have a new one. Um, we're producing those cars a few years, and then you're normally driving those cars much longer. Um, and so thankful we, we, we introduced upgrade upgradability last year with BMW operating system 7. So we can upgrade the software. That helps us a lot, especially for processing. The third step, the displaying here, um, it's a question what technology do you use? Is it a head-mounted device? Is it more like head-up display technology? Is it screen? But it depends what you're doing. The package size, so the volume, so to say, is very important for us because we somehow need to get it into the car. And we don't build trucks, we build um, cars. Um, but even if you find the package that somehow fits in the car, for us, modularity is very important. Because we have like a very flat and sporty set four roadstock car, different package, different, different kind of how would you can get into the car. But we also have something like an X7, totally different conditions. So for us, the display technology is quite specific, and that's what I want to say here. Derive and translate the AR, ba AR basics to your specific industry and application. And that was just an example for automotive. The next question is how could you prepare your product already today? And here the product is for us a car. So if you follow the step of motion detection, processing and rendering and then displaying, the next step would be sensing. And we put the most accurate and fastest sensors in our car. And we started decades ago. We did so for driving assistance system, like autonomous um, driving will need more sensors in the future, which we started decades ago for um, adaptive cruise control. And we integrate those sensors over the time. But we do not only have sensors that sense outside the outside part of the car, we also have sensors that sense the interior of the car. Um, the sensor driver that's used for, um, for hands-off, autonom uh, not autonomous driving, for hands-off, for um, 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 traffic jam assistance, sorry. Um, and that's in the car already today. The second thing is, we do not only have a lot of horsepower in our car, we also have a lot of computational power. And we combine that, as said, with software upgradability. 
that's very powerful for the process and rendering. And if you think we have the understanding of the outside world on the sensor side, we can now use that computational power to generate a 3D representation of the outside world. And using that, we have, of course, fully digital displays. That's all in our cars. And I think that's the core message here. Empower your company from the sensing via processing and rendering to display. And important message here, I have not talked about any AR experience yet. That's just empowering your product in the presence. If you have done that, then the question is, can we somehow consider the unknown? And here we'd like to give an example. It's an example of autonomous driving. I don't know if you know that concept that's like an industry standard that's not automotive specific. For those who don't know, I quickly introduce the concept. Um, there are six levels of autonomous driving from zero to five. Zero, one, and two, that's where you're driving yourself. Hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. Um, for, for levels one and two, the difference is mainly that you can do the hands off. As I said earlier, there is a camera observing where you're looking. It takes care that you're um, still observing the, the, the traffic, but you can do hands off temporarily. But the main task you're, you're doing, um, your primary task is driving the car and observing and taking care that the car is ev doing everything right. With level three, four, and five, that those things change. Now you can do hands off, you can do eyes off. And here you, you could do something like check your latest TED talk while the car is driving. You're not the driver anymore. With level four and five, that increases. It's mind off, it's driver off, um, so that's further steps in the future. But the important thing is on the left side, level zero, one, and two, that's somehow the known. That's where, where we have driver centricity. One example is driver distraction. You're driving a car, it's a machine meant that you are driving it. So like the main product is developed in that way. On the other side, there is no product yet. We will launch soon, no worries, but it's not there yet. So it's not at the customer, so it's somehow unknown what it really means. And therefore, um, we think about what could we do if the driver can use the direct field of view. Um, you can do much more use cases. And the special thing here is not just a TED talk in a, in a, you're watching in a, in a central information display. Now you could think about doing other use cases in a spatial way. That's what AR is about. And that's, that's the idea behind that, that you really think about, okay, what, what is something you haven't considered yet? And the, the message I want to give with you is, um, even though you don't know what the unknown is, that's the definition of <laughs> what is an unknown, be aware of that game changer. We know that's going to be a game changer. That will change the paradigmas a lot for automotive industry, dramatically. And we are aware of that and we are leading that way. We're dealing with that on, on a daily basis, not just for autonomous driving. We are thinking like 360 degree, what could we really do for the customer um, as soon as autonomous driving is there and spatial um, interaction with the driver, um, co-driver maybe also, um, with AR or even VR, that, that's a quite obvious idea. The next question I would like to raise is how can you overcome the technical limitations? And here would like to introduce the concept of divide and conquer. Some of you might know that from, from software algorithms, but I think it's valid here as well. Let's divide the technical limitations into technology and use cases. On technology side, you could do a proof of concept. That's very important for your decision making. You do not have to understand the technology in, in a way that it's already a finished product. It's a concept. But prove that as early as possible because that's important for your decisions. Check yourself. What is the blocking technology? What are you missing? Uh, what can you do to overcome that missing technology? Focus on the customer. Be aware who is your customer and focus on the customer. Um, derive the technical requirements from your customer to ensure a compelling experience. And cooperate with strong partners. I'll catch up on that on the next slide. On the use case side, I would say ignore the technical limitations. If that sounds too simple, I'll give an example by end of that slide. Generate insights by reality 
instead of hypothesis by theory. What I want to say is just do it, try it out. Don't, don't think just through it, because you might be wrong, A, R, and V, or it, there is no best practice, no blueprint. Um, if you don't try it out, you might be wrong. Your theory might be wrong. Refocus over time, that's something I think is quite important for development in the beginning, in an early stage. Think about trying out those things, proving things, understanding what's working, what's not working, what the customer want to have. I know as soon as you have understood those requirements, then focus on the quality to ensure a compelling experience for the customer. So message here is divide and conquer while keeping it simple. I said I'll give you an example and I'll, I'll do so. I'll come back to the mini augmented vision where, where I was heavily involved. Um, we, we showed 2015 and what we did there, um, we built a whole technology stack. And when I say we, it's not just BMW, we had strong partners doing so. So we thought about who, ca who can bring in what expertise. We needed some tracking because we want to do registered content. So we, th we were, were th thinking about, okay, who's a strong partner for tracking? We cooperated with them. We needed some computational power. We did the same. We thought about like, who's a good partner there. Um, and and we, we did the teamwork. The same for displays. We integrated the displays. Um, they, they haven't existed as we wanted to have it. So we needed to think about what's the requirements and find some compromise about availability on technology. But on the other side, okay, there is some threshold to ensure that the experience works. Um, and so we put together the whole stack from tracking, processing, and rendering to displays. It was full color, 3D. It was registered. We also had an understanding of the outside world to ensure the use cases are working. But we were not waiting on the use case and experience side until this technology was there, developed, and we could try out, okay, what's the use case, and then find out, okay, we need more or less computational power, field of view is wrong, two colors are fine instead of three, whatever. What we did is we tried the use cases in parallel, even though the hardware was not existing. And the trick we did here was we used VR for AR development. That might sound a little bit weird or, or but it's actually working. You, you, don't, you don't need the hardware. You can just record some data. You can even simulate it if you don't have the data. And check that out in VR. Um, and I'm talking for an end customer experience, simulating AR in VR. Um, and we did so. We realized what does it mean, um, field of view, colors, um, different use cases. Even if you, if you understand the technical requirements, you can stick that together. And of course, they are influencing each other, but the important thing is it's not a waterfall. You don't do the technology first and then the use cases. You can do that in parallel, divide and conquer, and then impact each other as you understand your concept, as you understand the real requirements. You prove that, and then you're focusing even better. Last question, how to work? And idea here is actually that that's a little bit based on my personal experience. We're working with a lot of startups and smaller companies and I'm loving what they're doing and it's like a pleasure working with these companies. That's one of the best things I, I can do. It's, it's so interesting what they're doing, how they're thinking, they're thinking differently and that's a huge valid value. I would like to give something back to, to those companies um, and, and the message here is that you identify and focus um, or you, you first identify very clearly what's, what's your make or buy strategy. And make or buy strategy means what is your unique selling point. Identify that very clear. It cannot be clear enough. And focus on that. This is your core contribution. You own that. That's yours. For everything else, there are strong partners out there. Check out AWE. There's so many partners out there. You don't have to reinvent everything. And BMW is doing the same. We were thinking about what, what is our USP? Well, what are we doing? Um, and that's what we are doing ourselves. That's our core contribution. We are integrating great technology in, in an extremely good way. We're producing motors, engines, and a lot of other things. But we don't have a fab for producing screens. There are good companies that do good screens. On the other side, towards bigger companies like BMW, I would also say something. Um, we are like 100 years old now. Automotive industry is over 100 years old. And um, we haven't invented agile development. Quite obvious.
but it's also for good reasons. Because 100 years ago, well, our product was a pure machine. There were no software, software wasn't even invented. So developing this machine, there were good reasons how we developed those things. Nevertheless, the product changed. And software get more important over time, and now it's very important for the car. It's still a mach machine at some point, but nevertheless, software is important. And here, I think it's important that big companies like BMW, we think, okay, how can we overcome, not ignore, that's a different, overcome that history, integrate it, and really apply that agile development into how we work. And be applying means, okay, we don't just copy the, the, the agile manifest into into our development and that's it. We, you need to apply it, you need to think what's good, what's bad, what's the benefit of how we work uh, right now and then incorporate it and take the benefits out of it. Um, and we do so, we are working agile wherever it's beneficial for us and it's working out great. So the, the method here is that you um, own your USP unique selling point and cooperate with strong partners for everything else. So my, my takeaway message to you is derive and translate the AR basics to your specific industry and application. Empower your company from sensing via processing to displaying. Be aware of game changers and lead this way. Divide and conquer while keeping it simple. And own your unique selling point and cooperate with strong partners for everything else. Thank you very much. <laughs>